Had an interesting email this morning from our partner broker, Switch Markets, who have said, Hi Nick, please could you make us a YouTube video all about the day in the life of a trader and your own history as a trader? Because most people think that all you do is sit around all day and click buttons. What? No, there is much, much more to this job than clicking buttons and I will prove it to you. Let's go. Hello, my name is Nick Quinn. I am the head of trader coaching at howtotrade.com. Been trading since 2007 during the credit crisis. Memories of fear are coming back. What the heck is going on down here? It's hearing screaming, bye, bye, bye. And uh, I, I head up the trading team here at How To Trade. We teach clients every day. We take them from knowing, usually uh, just starting in the industry, just getting their, their foothold in understanding some of the basics of technical analysis and fundamental analysis, and we help support them through that journey as they build and they grow as traders. When I first started learning how to trade back in 2007, the credit crisis had just started. I've been living in the States and I came back to the UK and all of my work pretty much dried up overnight and I, I couldn't understand A, why that happened and B, what I was going to do. So I knew I needed something else uh, to my skill set and uh, I remember very vividly uh, standing in the kitchen in my apartment and uh, listening on the radio uh, to the announcement that Lehman Brothers, this huge great big investment bank, had filed for bankruptcy. And I couldn't understand why. What, what has gone on to for a huge great big bank like that to just suddenly not be able to operate anymore? And that was where I started. Pretty much that day I started Googling and, and looking around for information and that led me on to uh, the concept that you could trade your own money from home. You could use trading as a vehicle to help you in life in lots of different ways and that's where I started from and that's where my, my, my journey started. Hey this video is brought to you by our sponsor Switch Markets who are now one of the leading FX brokers for retail traders. They're a great choice if you're new to the market because they're one of the easiest brokers to get set up with. They're also considered one of the best brokers for EA trading. They don't limit the strategies that you can use and offer free access to a VPS for all algo traders. Together with the incredible customer support they are well worth taking a look at. If you're looking to open an account, Switch Markets will match your deposit up to the value of $5,000. That means $10,000 of working capital, which is amazing. They are well worth checking out. The link is in the description section below. Now, back to the video. Trading is one of these activities where you have to be up early in the morning. Uh, you really do. Uh, the trading just operates all around the clock, all the time. And um, all of the information has to be digested from what happened in Asia overnight if you're in Europe. And uh, so as a consequence of that, you have to get up early. So my day starts really early every single day. So I tend to wake up at around about 6 a.m. every single day. I then have uh, a bit of breakfast uh, as quick as I can. And uh, that window between 6 and 7, 7, 7.30 is really the, the chance to catch up on what's happened overnight, look at the, the news events for the day, what's going to be driving the markets, any key moves, the way that Wall Street closed. So you need to be across that. So that's what I do first of all. And then obviously we go, we do live streams. I do my live stream for all of the clients on the website at 8 a.m. here in the UK. I need to be on top of what's going on. I need to know uh, which markets are going to be active throughout the course of the session. Valuable information that's not necessarily in the public domain. Uh, I have a squawk service, so I get a lot of information sent to me. I need to get across that, pick out the key bits, and then feed that uh, in, into the into the trading room, into the live streams, so that people can, can get some sort of an advantage. You really do benefit from waking up early and planning out your day, knowing what's going on in the world. I cannot emphasize it enough. It's really super important if you are a uh, trader. So after I had spent years uh, on my own work, my own study and my own development as a trader, I was uh, very lucky to get a job at one of the big four banks in the UK, uh, working on the stock broking side. But my, my, my true passion has always been in foreign exchange and trading futures contracts and over the counter uh, Forex and commodities markets. So uh, I saw a job advertised for the Think Huge group working at How to Trade and I applied. And this was the opportunity that was there Heading up the heading up the team of um, of coaches, and uh, I jumped at it. Usually about one o'clock, half past one. If I don't have any other company meetings, 
uh, I'll do a lot of deep dive analysis into the US markets because we have a window of time before 2.30 in the UK, uh, where Europe is basically sort of like into the, into the majority of its trading day, but the US is just starting to wake, uh, uh, waken up and then uh, the US markets then kick off at 2.30 here in the UK. So you need to be prepped and ready. So I put my attention right across any data that's gonna be coming out in the US, if there's any key information that we're gonna need to, uh, that is potentially market moving for the dollar or for the commodity markets or for the uh, the uh, indexes as well, you need to be across that. So that uh, analysis for me is always done in that hour before the US Open, around about one o'clock, 1.30 up to 2.30. Uh, and then I know uh, I'm in the loop of exactly what's gonna happen. If there's anything that we need to put and put into the room, pass on to the clients as well that is useful, then we obviously, we do that as well. And then we're prepped ready. Usually from there, I will then have a chat with Shane and Connor because Shane's then across the US markets. We usually have a catch up so that we're all on the same page. We know uh, exactly what the uh, the workload is for the day, for the week, where we're all up to. The day flies by when you're a trader. It really moves very, very quickly. So you, you have to make sure that you take some sort of time out of the day for yourself, whether that's to go to the gym, uh, go out for a walk, see some friends, see some family, do something that is not connected to sitting at a desk, looking at the markets, looking at price action being across the markets, that break is super, super important. So I always make a, a point of going out at lunchtime and uh, grabbing a sandwich, going, just taking 10 minutes just to uh, have a bit of a break. Uh, do something else other than trading. When you've been trading for a long time, you certainly rack up a lot of experience, some of it good, some of it bad. I remember one particular trade back in 2012, it was trading the Japanese yen, and it was at the time of the Greek sovereign debt crisis, and the Japanese yen was the ultimate safe haven. There was huge amounts of money flooding into the Japanese yen, and it was getting stronger and stronger and stronger by the day and by the week. And dollar yen was obviously just pushing down and down and down, well past 100, back into sort of like yeah, uh, 80 or, or something like that. And I read an article on Zero Hedge. And the article said, uh, the days of yen strength are coming to an end. And at that particular time, I didn't really know anything about what I was doing. I'd spent the majority of my time just kind of gambling and clicking the button. So I thought, well, that's it. I want a long-term sweep, a, a big rotational point in a, in a currency. As the market was going against me, uh, I would always then add more in. Dolly M would trade to the downside, I would add more. And I've got this big trading account and I'm just adding more and more in. And then by uh, the time, I think it was either September, October, Shinji Abe released the whole Arbnomics thing where they came out to print yen, basically. They were gonna just flood the market with cheap Japanese yen. And that was gonna you know, reverse the course of the Japanese yen and dollar yen would rotate down and then, and then start trending in the other direction. And that was it, that was my trade. That was gonna follow that. They came out with the announcement and pretty much within a couple of days, all of my money returned, all the losses that were building up, they all returned and the position was at break even, it started to make some money. And then the Monday came along and I was expecting, okay, I'll wait for, wait for the market because dollar yen will be pushing back to the downside, wait for the pullback and then start building the position again. And it didn't, the market just carried on moving higher. So it was going in the direction I wanted it to trade, but I was now no longer on board. I just grabbed the profits and the market's going up and it's going up without me. And I couldn't believe it. And, and I thought, okay, well, just start buying again and I couldn't do it. There was something psychological in my head. I was so used to averaging down, I couldn't click the button. I, I, I just couldn't do it. When the, when the candles were just pushing higher like this, I was too frightened to, 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 buy, uh, to buy the highs. And of course, you know, when you look historically back at that, you, it was a, a, a structural bottom in, the, uh, in dollar yen. So that was the first time that I actually genuinely thought, there's something else to this, that there's more to trading than you potentially think there is. There's a lot more going on psychologically, internally, the way that you interface with the market, the way you, you behave as a trader. That was the point in time that I thought, okay, you need to start to think about this a little bit differently. You need to start doing, uh, you need to start working, basically. It, this is not just gonna happen to you. You're not just gonna make a huge amount of money. You're gonna have to work for it. Probably the best trade I ever did um, was a Euro dollar trade. 
Uh, this was back in 2017 and I was just on the edge of starting to figure out that I really wanted to be a long-term trader rather than a scalper. I managed to get some money in on the uh, euro against the dollar and it was around about the one 750 uh, really really started to move up higher from there and it topped out around about 123 and I rolled the whole thing throughout the entire year so I entered at the beginning of the year with around about 1750 I think my my uh, my first position was in and then I started to pyramid in and I managed to get out around about 120 so I missed the top of it uh, but I got the whole of the year in one sweep and uh, that was the that was a profitable trade and uh, that was the best trade that I've ever that I've ever managed to do We have a lot of video content to produce. We produce a lot of video content in various different guises, not just the live streams, uh, but YouTube videos, TikTok videos, social media videos. We are building a, a really, really good trading academy, which we get fantastic feedback on. We don't skirt around the edges and just sort of come up with something that we'll do. We always put a lot of uh, decent content into the videos. So that video production uh, for me then takes place around about sort of like three, half past three, four, four o'clock, five o'clock, and I do that. And then sometimes if I've got to do something into the evening, then I'll do that. Last thing that I usually do is then look at the close of the US markets just to get a sense of how Wall Street closed, uh, where the closing print for the S&P 500, that's something that I usually want to know and how uh, the market has interpreted what has happened throughout the day. If there's been any speakers or any market moving events, you need to be across that because that's gonna set up your, 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 next, uh, your next day's trading. I wake up early every day, so I, I do tend to go to bed early as well. I'm usually asleep by 11, 11.30 at night. Uh, when you're trading so much and you're involved in this industry so much, you do need to lead a healthy lifestyle. So you need to make sure you get enough sleep and you need to um, eat well, exercise and look after yourself, drink plenty of water during the day. Trading itself is not a demanding job physically, it is an endurance job. You really do have to spend um, a lot of time uh, at the computer screen and it really does take its toll. So having a healthy routine, a healthy lifestyle and looking after yourself is a huge important component of uh, your success, often not spoken about in many uh, retail trading circles. So yeah, I go to bed early and, I'm, uh, and I wake up early as well and that's the routine that, that I get into. But I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way. So there you have it. That is what the job looks like when you're trading from home every day. Massive thank you to our sponsor, Switch Markets, who make all of this possible. Remember, if you want to get access to the market, then you need a broker. So check out their link in the description section below if you're looking to upgrade from your current broker or you're starting out totally from scratch. Also, don't forget myself and the other coaches at How to Trade are here for you 24-7. So if you're looking to learn how to trade or you're struggling with any particular trading problems, then come over to the website and have a chat. We'll get you signed up to the Academy and on the right track in no time. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel for more and we'll see you in the next one.